Hi and welcome back to Bickington Photographic Club's YouTube Tutorials channel. Uh, this is the second in a series of Photoshop CC tutorials. Uh, you'll remember in the first one we just introduced you to the software for the very first time and showed you a little bit about the workspace. And you'll remember that we opened this screen first and this is the screen you'll see when you open Photoshop standalone. Um, and it shows us the previous images that we have opened and worked on and um, when you go ahead and uh, click an image we get this camera raw box come up um, you'll remember seeing that in the first tutorial I'm just going to put it in the middle of the screen just so that you're all focused on the center of the screen and um, I mentioned to you that it was very similar in many ways to the Lightroom working panel and that in fact Camera Raw is a part of Lightroom software so rather than being a standalone window as it is here it's all built in. So I thought what we do is rather than take the image straight into Photoshop is actually show you how the Camera Raw facility works and what you can do with it. As you can see there's a multitude of different tools that you can use in here um, from simple black and white conversions um, back to color you can choose color profiles whether you want to use Adobe colors or whether you want to look at other color profiles uh, you can even upload your own color profile if you wish if you've got something saved uh, white balance something that we all have issues with from time to time I'm sure I'm not the only one that's been on a shoot at night and taken a photograph and uh, found that it's incredibly orange because I've kept an indoor light set up or a warm day set up and uh, it, it just looks wrong um, but it gives you the facility to change those things and you can see how a simple change in white balance can change the look of your picture and you don't have to use a preset white balance white balance at the end of the day is the temperature you can alter the temperature of your image by moving your slider you can make it look colder or warmer so there's no limit to what you can do and obviously if you're double clicking it'll reset it to the setting that's in your metadata tinting so you can use the tint feature if you want to change the look of your image um, down in these sliders you'll notice that all of these have impact on the histogram our exposure is the center section of our histogram and you can see that because when I light up the center of my histogram it actually says exposure underneath um, you can obviously alter the contrast but then you can also alter the whites which is our far right hand side of our histogram which we can see a quite bright there at the moment then we've got our highlights back to our exposure then our shadows and then the blacks very very similar to the way we work in Lightroom so you can go ahead and tweak these down take the exposure down a bit uh, you can increase your contrast obviously decrease all you're doing is trying to play with an image and try and give it a slightly better look before actually opening it in the main software um, now here it's not so much the highlights that we want to alter if we look at the histogram it's the whites area that's uh, giving us most of the problems and in some cases you can take that all the way out and you can see it's improved but it's still no still not perfect so carry on tweaking you can see there's a little bit more bonnet detail coming in there now not quite so much shine I quite like the shine that's coming off the windscreen but I didn't like the shine that was coming off the bonnet so much or oh, sorry it's an American car the hood so much um, shadows obviously works from the other end of the histogram you can bring those up to give a little bit more detail maybe in the grass that's in the shadow underneath the car same is true for the blacks you can see that work in there if you go to the extreme of your arrow you can see what the extreme ends do 
um, and any time you want to reset an arrow you just double click um, clarity is obviously very similar in many ways to sharpness it's basically making all the edges uh, appear more vivid and more obvious um, effectively trying to give you more detail very easy slider to overwork and make a picture look far too artificial uh, almost giving it a sort of a an HDR over the top look sometimes um, our DHA slider very similar as to the one in Lightroom um, if you've got an image that has a haze particularly where sky is concerned it can be very good at actually bringing out a bit of cloud detail by reducing that haze and you can see how that's happening in the top of this demo image uh, vibrance as it suggests and saturation are both going to affect the color in your image one's going to affect how bright the particular colors look the other is going to affect the amount of that color that's coming through your image so there are real subtle differences between the two which as you play along with them you'll find out for yourself uh, now there are many other things that you can do as well like your tone curves and we've got those in in Lightroom as well we can make individual adjustments to our hue our saturation and our luminance again very Lightroom-esque we can do lens corrections like our chromatic aberration um, something that you'll want to do with many of your photographs particularly where a dark area meets a light area which is where you're most likely to see that kind of purple or green um, tint around the edges almost like you've coloured outside of the lines uh, profile corrections that's something that your camera talks to the software and vice versa to tell you what the camera was what the lens was um, and effectively if you see the difference here is taking the curvature out of the lens sometimes it's desired you want to flatten the image down other times you may want to keep it personal preference wins out at the end of the day um, one thing to remember is the wider the angle of the lens the more likelihood there is of a bigger curve so it may be beneficial to do your profile corrections if you've got a very wide angle lens um, again personal preference it's entirely up to yourselves you've got special effects uh, which basically is looking at your graining and your vignetting um, vignettes for those of you who don't know is where you're affecting the edges of your image most likely the corners just to bring focus in and you can do that in a negative space way by using dark or you can do it using light you can alter the midpoint of your vignette you can alter the roundness the feather etc play around with it and if you're going to use a vignette then obviously make sure that it is the right shape size feather etc for what you're doing there is as with uh, for, uh, Lightroom a number of different presets you can go ahead and use presets but I'd urge you to play around with the actual sliders um, and actually create the image you want um, maybe just use a preset as a starting point to save you a little bit of time uh, but generally speaking um, you're going to be using these sliders because no preset is ever going to be bang on what you're looking for or at least very rarely is that the case um, up the top we've got some other tools obviously we can crop we can level um, and a whole world of different things something that you can do in camera raw that you can't do in Lightroom very easily is actually spin your image round um, which can be quite useful depending on what you're doing uh, if you're creating a panel for example um, you may need to rotate or if you're blending images together um, there's a number of different reasons why you may need to use those tools and of course you've got the ability to zoom uh, which gives you an opportunity to look a little bit more closely 
your photograph, grab the hand, pull it around, have a look at it, see what you're happy with, fine tune it, um, and then when you are eventually happy with it, um, of course the next thing to do is to actually bring it into, sorry as I play with the zoom, bring it into your Photoshop proper and from there it's got the adjustments made in Camera Raw and you're ready to start doing any number of other edits from these tools here. So there you go. That's Camera Raw uh, which opens before Photoshop to allow you to do those tweaks. I hope you've enjoyed looking at that. Have a go, play with the sliders, see what extremes there are, pick what's right for the image that you're working on then bring it into here and have some fun with this as well i hope you've enjoyed watching this bickington photographic club youtube tutorials channel this is uh, photoshop tutorial number two um, catch you soon for the next one thanks a lot bye